So recently, I tested Battlefield 6 since the game officially released earlier this month, and I specifically looked at CPU performance, showcasing both the 9800X 3D and my 14900K. My test showed some very interesting results and actually exposed a frame time issue exhibited from the 9800X 3D. However, I did go back and did some further investigating and testing and found what was holding that CPU back. And this could be a issue that's prevalent with a lot of users and some people may not actually be aware about it. So let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today I wanted to show you guys some further testing for CPUs in Battlefield 6, as well as talk about some benchmarks and results I showed in my last video. There were a number of comments I had received on that video stating that they had also experienced similar performance or dips in their systems when using a Ryzen processor, and some who stated that they didn't actually experience anything like that and they had achieved higher results. And so that did prompt me to go back and take a look at the results and do some further testing. And I have seen some other clips of people running the same benchmarks uh, of their 9800X 3D in this test. And uh, I did see that they were getting better results. So of course, you know, that's going to prompt me to look into it. So I wanted to see, you know, what was going on and what was causing those discrepancies. So let's go ahead and address all of that. And by the way, to save us some time, I'll have the video description updated with the test system specs. So you guys can check that out all there. And one of the first things that I saw where people showed that they had higher results was that they were testing with the RTX 5090. Now, if you've looked at GPU testing data for Battlefield 6 that was posted online from other outlets, you'll, you'll notice that Battlefield 6's engine absolutely loves Blackwell GPUs. Even at 1080p, where you're primarily going to be CPU bound, the 5090 was still outperforming the RTX 4090 by a good margin if you look at a result from an outlet like tech power up like this data actually shows it's faster by a significant margin but i think they were testing in the game's single player campaign mode whereas in the benchmark test that we used it is a very cpu intensive multiplayer match with a local hosted server but even so i'm fairly certain that if i had a 5090 my minimums would actually be quite a bit higher the next thing i did notice uh, from other people who were testing that custom match is that they were doing this, where they would load into the custom match, go towards that starting point by the taxi, and then start their benchmark run right away. And as you guys can see from that test footage when I was doing the same thing, the averages are much higher than the results I got from that previous video. But doing it this way actually isn't correct because for this custom map, it does actually take a couple of minutes to let all of the 91 bots load in. Hence, in that previous video, you can check the footage, I was looking at the scoreboard to make sure that all of the bots had loaded in. This now leads me into the next factor I wanted to talk about, and if you notice the changes on the overlay, you'll know where I'm going with this. So last year, I made a video talking about how when I got my 9800X 3D system set up, I was experiencing some poor stuttering issues, and after doing a whole bunch of troubleshooting, it turned out that having MSI Afterburners, GPU Power Percent, and GPU Power Monitoring enabled within the software is what was causing those issues. Now, the developer of Afterburner did leave some important comments that I pinned on that video. So if you're interested in, you know, learning more in depth about what was going on, then read those comments. But I made a follow up video showing how within MSI Afterburner, there is a profiler panel that you can see which sensors in particular had the longest or highest execution times. And the GPU of power percent was really the main culprit and had by far the highest execution times than everything else. With that said, the other sensors weren't as bad, and I showed some more benchmarks that having the regular GPU power sensor enabled isn't as detrimental to the 9800X 3D's performance, though there were so, still some considerable performance hits in a CPU-bound game like Black Ops 6, but also using Hardware 64 in conjunction, which pulls a whole bunch of other sensors with MSI Afterburner, could also cause a severe hit. This problem isn't nearly as detrimental on Intel CPUs as it is on the Ryzen processors. So it is a flaw within the architecture that hopefully AMD addresses the next time. As I've noticed, this has been present going all the way back to my 1800X when the Ryzen series first in, uh, launched back in 20, 2017. Not sure if it's because of, you know, Infinity Fabric Speeds not being able to keep up, but um, clearly there is a larger impact on the Ryzen CPUs than it is on Intel. 
And the reason why I made that follow-up video was one to bring more awareness on the penalties of using hardware monitoring and polling. And I mean, if you really think about it, these days, everyone is using some kind of hardware monitoring uh, or polling software, not necessarily MSI Afterburner or, Har or Hardware Info 64, but it's also built into programs like Corsair's IQ, Lee and & Lee. And I mean, this is because they have AIOs and coolers and even fans that have, you know, little OLEDs or LCDs on them, which are polling hardware and showing sensor data. So that is something to be aware of. Even, even GPUs themselves these days, like the high-end models, are coming out with these little LCD screens on them with all of the sensor data being pulled within the vendor's um, software. And I mean, everyone has these accessories these days, so it's just something good to be aware about. The second reason is because I used to lean towards doing just bar charts for benchmarks, but you know, a lot of people complain that it's boring, it doesn't really serve as a proof of the results, and I do certainly agree with that for sure. It's also more fun and, I suppose, interactive. But also when showing the side-by-side -side gameplay, I want to show all of these stats because this way we can get a whole picture on exactly what's going on with all of the separate components, the GPU, CPU, power, temps, and all of that. But then this way, the drawback is that you are going to be incurring a penalty. And I noticed that the impact can also vary depending on which game you're playing. GPU bound games or, you know, those single player GPU bound games, it's not really as large, but for a very CPU demanding game, in this case, Battlefield 6, that problem was further exacerbated because Battlefield 6 is a very CPU intensive and core and thread heavy game. So this was one of the large drawbacks of doing these side by side comparisons where there could be a performance hit. And in this case, it turned out to be a large performance hit when using these overlays, right? But in that last video, what I went over, using just GPU power, not the power percent, the performance impact wasn't as large. So keeping that on, I thought I'd be okay. But going back and doing some further testing, it looks like, yes, in this game in particular, that uh, impact is actually very large. So, you know, with all of that taken into consideration, I decided to go back and retest Battlefield 6 with minimal polling on the overlay. And as you guys will see, it's just the CPU sensors, which hardly require any execution time. It's even lower than the frame rate itself. This is at 1080p low settings. And what you'll find is on the left is the footage from that previous video, which had all of the sensors and all of the overlay. And um, on the right is where you'll see the retest we did without having all of those sensors on. But the performance you can see is much, much better on the 9800X3D. It's not experiencing any major inconsistencies with its frame times. And at the end of the run, we see that our average frame rate is 7% higher than the average frame rate was from the previous test. Along with that, our 1% lows do get a pretty significant boost. 20% higher and 0.1% lows are also 24% higher. So that's a very significant difference. Along with that, I did notice that CPU utilization is much higher as well. So this does actually, of course, lead to higher power consumption. So it seems like to me that having all of that polling running in the back was for some reason conflicting with the scheduling as well. So it's quite weird. So now, now when we bring the 4900K into the mix, and I did do the same thing for that CPU as well, where I disabled all the extra polling and left the CPU stats along with the FPS stats, and doing so also actually results in the Intel chip getting a slight boost as well compared to the results of that previous video. But like I said earlier, the degree to which Intel is impacted is far less than what happens to Ryzen. So that's why the differences actually aren't as large for that chip. But now we see a different story actually play out. So the 9800X3D holds the advantage in average FPS by a considerable margin. And along with that, they're both much closer now in terms of the minimums. It still looks like Intel is slightly better or a little bit more stable, but at this point, you really won't notice the difference there. Then when we move on to 1440p low settings with DLSS performance mode enabled, where we saw the largest dips for the 9800X3D, we see that the issue it was exhibiting with its 1% and 0.1% lows is no longer persisting and it performs way better. So by the end of the run, we see the same story that we saw play out with the 1080p result, higher average FPS on the 9800X3D, and we're basically looking at both of the CPUs being neck and neck when it comes to the minimums. So after taking a look at these results, it just goes to show you how severe of an impact we can see on the 9800X3D's minimums when there is a lot of polling going on in the background. And while we see that the 4900K had an impact on its lows, it actually wasn't as large. Now just think about how many people are out there running systems 
like this because like I said, there are just so many third-party software systems out there from different vendors for cases and fans and coolers that have small LCDs, even on the GPUs themselves that require these sensors to be active and constantly be pulling in the background. So if you've been playing Battlefield 6 on a 9800X 3D or any Ryzen CPU for that matter and have noticed that you know something felt off even though your FPS counter showed high performance, it's probably because you might be experiencing some dips and stuttering because of all that pulling going on in the background. So definitely double check your background resources and disable all of that. Me personally, this is why I don't like messing around with all these third-party monitoring stats um, for my personal system uh, or even all of that RGB software. Like all of my hardware, all of my fans are actually, or their RGB is actually connected to a hardware controller. It's not even connected to the motherboard. And then for sensors themselves, I just have CPU temp and GPU temp, which requires nothing for execution time. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, frame times are buttery smooth. It's also disappointing to see this because, you know, as I said, I like doing these side-by-side -side clips now. I think they're just more interactive and fun for you guys. And showing all of these stats and sensors this way, we can get a whole picture of what's going on with all of the different components and hardware and how different games affect different uh, areas of the hardware. But if there's games like this where having that info present is such a detriment to performance that it pretty much defeats, you know, the whole process of showing benchmarks then I'll just have to find some kind of other alternatives. And, you know, I had another idea and I thought instead of messing around with third-party apps, why not actually go directly to a first-party app for the GPU? And that's actually where NVIDIA's overlay comes in. And as you guys can see, the performance between the two sides is very, very similar. We're basically looking at margin of error stuff. So this way I can still see what's going on with the GPU behavior. Though it looks like there is still some uh, stuff missing from NVIDIA's overlay. I'll be playing around with some sensors from MSI Afterburner individually and see which ones have a large impact. And I'll have to experiment with this again because I did actually try this in Black Ops 6 with the NVIDIA overlay and found that it was still having a pretty large impact as well. So it's, it's going to be a hit or miss. All in all, though, that is what I wanted to highlight to you guys and, you know, offer some clarity on the results from that previous video. So, no, it wasn't some old unstable OC or something wrong with the OS. It simply just comes down to the resource management between the two different processors. But it was certainly interesting to see all of the theories thrown out there from the comments. And what I thought was actually more eye-opening was the fact how some people were absolutely losing their marbles and fuming over what the results were. And honestly, guys, it's really not serious. This is just hardware for our own leisurely activities at the end of the day. But if it really pinches your nerves like that, I really don't know what to say. Go outside, take a walk, seek some help because that shit ain't normal. And, you know, a number of bands were given out. So if you're going to be weird in the comments like that, just unsub and leave. I really don't care. But that's going to be doing it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found something in formative and helpful, but we'll touch base in the next video. Take care. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.